Well, hello once again. Today we're going to be uh, discussing Mark 13, and there's so much in it. It's Jesus' end time teaching, um, and there's so much there that we just need to, to head in. There's no way that we can cover this or do it justice, but it's such an important uh, chapter, so uh, misinterpreted, so misunderstood even by Christians in our day, or especially by Christians in our day, that we really need to carefully listen to what Jesus is telling us about the uh, end of the age and his and his coming, so um, so Jesus uh, the the chapter starts out. Um, he went to the temple, um, and his one of his disciples says to him, "Teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here." And so he's really impressed by by the temple. The temple was impressive, and Jesus said to him, "Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone." shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So again, Jesus is trying to bring the disciples to a new place in their thinking. They're thinking the kingdom's right here. Man, Jesus is here. This is it. And Jesus is trying to expand their thinking. And as we see in this chapter, he uses a lot of terms uh, that suggest long passages of time. So, um, so what needs to happen? You know, it gets it gets confusing to people. What needs to happen before the Lord returns? And He's giving you like a bird's eye view. This is going to happen over a long, a lot of history is going to go down. It's going to pass by before um, what you think is going to happen is going to happen, as He says to His disciples. So um, so they're sitting on the Mount of Olives, and Peter, James, John, and Andrew ask Him privately thinking, of course, that he's going to give them more insight. And he, he does, um, but this is recorded in Scripture as public insight. So he's giving us the same teaching. And Jesus says, Tell us then, when will all these things be, and what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus answered them and began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you. Now Jesus says this several times. Um, in the Gospels, always um, with regard to the end of the age, and so we need to pay attention that we're not deceived. That we we often think, um, I think we often think that yeah, there's like kind of like maybe two or three current theories, but they're kind of similar, and you know, it, it's going to be this or that, and I, I don't need to worry about it too much. But when Jesus tell, tells you. Be careful that you don't get deceived. I think we better pay attention to that. We need to pay attention to uh, that he's warning us sternly. Don't be deceived. And, and he says, For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Okay, so um, what does that mean? You know, there are people that definitely... In history stand up from time to time and say you know I'm the Messiah I'm Jesus in in Orthodox Judaism there are people that don't quite say that they're the Messiah but they have grand followings um, and perhaps some of them hint that they could be the coming Messiah um, there are those you know there there there's that um, but they're they're pretty easily easily you know seen through um, but Jesus says that, uh, you know, many will, many, many will come saying, I am he, and will deceive many, many. So many people are going to come and say that, it's, come in, in the name of Jesus, and come in the name of Jesus, really, and many will be deceived. So you're going to have to think that, that perhaps Christians are some of the people that will be deceived and sort of stop thinking that, um, you know, well, it's just gonna be the Muslims that are deceived or the Jews that'll be deceived. Many will be deceived. Jesus is talking to his own followers here. He's talking to Jewish believers. Um, and then he says, when you hear of wars, and let me just say this one small thing. Um, Once someone can put forth a message and say that it's from God, and it 
can be put forth in the name of Jesus and not and not be a message from God. And because of, of uh, the way our prophetic movements are constructed, uh, many people say, I have a message from God. And perhaps we need to be more careful judges of those messages because um, if they're not, and, and, and perhaps they're well-meaning, perhaps they feel that their message is from God, but if they're not, and they're very charismatic, then they can lead people into a way of thinking and slowly lead them away from the gospel. The devil's, um, you know, the devil's not gonna just stand up there and say, be an atheist or, you know, follow this. He, he, there's always a hook in it that makes it seem like it's truth. So we need to be careful for things like that. So he continues to say, when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled for such things must happen. But the end is not yet. Now, since Jesus has left us 2000 years ago, we've heard of lots of wars and lots of rumors of wars. And he said, that's not, that's not the, the sole factor for determining that I'm coming. Uh, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be earthquakes in various places. And there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows, not even the end, but the beginnings. But watch out for yourselves, for they will deliver you up to councils, and you will be beaten in the synagogues, and you will be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. Okay, so the gospel being preached to all the nations is going to take time. It's not going to happen in just one or two years. Even if you were considering it from a first century mindset, the gospel, the, the, the apostles went out after Jesus uh, was, died and was resurrected. They went to the four corners of the earth um, and they started to preach the gospel. But even today, there are many, many unreached people groups that have not heard the gospel. And so just by that criteria, the gospel must be preached. God has to be faithful to preach the gospel, to allow the message of salvation to go to every people group in the world. Whether they accept it or not is not the issue, but that it's been presented to them and God has given them a chance is the issue. So when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak, but you will be given what to speak in that hour. And then he talks about family betrayal, brother will be prayed betray brother, father, a child, a child will rise up against his parents. So something's happening. Um, as this starts to increase, what it would take to betray uh, your family, it starts to step, the, step this thing up a notch. And so you see as history starts to roll, it's like a, it's like a, a ball rolling down a hill and it starts to gain momentum. So while certainly bad things happened in the first century, and throughout history, a certain set of things is going to start to escalate and roll, um, gathering momentum until it comes to a time in verse 14. But it says, but when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing where it ought not be, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let him who is on the housetops not go down into the house nor enter to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his garment. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Pray that your flight may not be in winter. Okay, so um, Jesus is telling us a whole lot. Again, there's the time element. Um, and again, he's as, as he winds up this teaching, he, he says, look, no one knows not even me when I'm coming back. That's for the Father to tell me when I'm coming back. And so we have to be looking uh, for the signs that Jesus gives. Um, and he's saying, first of all, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not be. Now this is the first major sign that um, is very understandable and very time limited um, or time constrained. He points us back to the prophet Daniel and it's important that we take Jesus seriously. Jesus isn't just sort of like um, leaving 
us telling us something and not grounding it in scripture. He points us back to Daniel the prophet, and so we need to go back to Daniel the prophet. And there we read of the, um, the Antichrist coming to power, uh, who will be the abomination of desolation, and standing where it ought not to be in the temple. He takes over the temple. Um, so the temple has to be rebuilt. There has to be a temple for him to uh, cause the abomination to happen in. Um, so you can see that Jesus at the beginning is when his disciples ask him what, you know, the temple's there, you know, isn't it gorgeous? And he says, wait till it falls down. And here's, he, he's again appealing to the prophet Daniel and saying that when this happens, the temple will, will be rebuilt. Um, and you need to be really careful as soon as you see that, there's trouble. There's trouble in Jerusalem. There's going to be trouble all over the world, but there's going to be major trouble in Jerusalem. So much trouble that as soon as you see that happen, as soon as the Antichrist stands up in the temple and proclaims himself to be uh, the Holy One and to demand worship, just get, just get out of Dodge. Run. Run from Jerusalem. Um, pray that it's not winter. Pray that you don't have a nursing baby because you are going to be probably on foot. You're going to be fleeing. Um, and it's not going to be um, easy. Pray that your flight not, be not in winter, for in those days there will be tribulation such as not been from the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh would be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he chose, he shortened the days. So, um, this is called the Great Tribulation. It's the latter half of the Tribulation, the last three and a half years, and it's going to be the worst time in human history. Um, so the, the history of the world has a lot of horrible things that have happened, but this is going to be the very worst. Um, and he says, again, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, or look, he is there, Do, don't believe him. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Take heed, see I have told you these things beforehand. Okay, so just because a, a prophet um, says something or prophesies or has an accompanying sign, it does not mean um, that what they're saying is from God. This, the, the accompanying sign does not prove what they're saying. Whether it is consistent with the whole counsel of God whether it is consistent with the, the biblical prophets and what they have said and what has been revealed in the scriptures, um, it, it's, doesn't, it doesn't, um, just because they're saying it doesn't need to be true. And then he talks about things that are happening in the heavens, signs that we can see in the heavens. The sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. Stars of heaven will fall. Powers in heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Okay, and so again, Jesus is referring to, to himself as the Son of Man, as he has in the book of Mark. And again, that Son of Man imagery is in the book of Daniel. In Daniel, the Son of Man is the one who comes riding the clouds, coming in the clouds. Um, and so he, it says he will send his angels and gather together the elect from the four winds from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches are already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. See you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the very doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So, okay, he's saying that the people that see this intensity, this great tribulation, that generation isn't going to pass away until they see their Lord's return, because that is the windup of that section of human history. We have the, the tribulation of seven years, um, and then the last three and a half years being the great tribulation, which is very difficult to endure. And then we see the Son of Man coming to rescue Israel, coming on the clouds, and Israel sees him, um, cries out to him, and are saved. The whole nation, it says, is saved in that one day. So, um, 
And then Jesus says, the day and the hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. Now remember when Jesus, um, after his resurrection, he appeared to the to disciples and he taught them many things about the kingdom of God. And again, they, they asked him, when is this when is the kingdom coming? And he said, it's not really for you to know. And it's not really for us to know the exact. He says, you can't know the day or the hour, but you can know the season. You can, you can know these signs that come from the mouth of Jesus and you can think about it. So there can be, um, you know, as soon as, you know, something happens, you get a, you know, a full moon or a special kind of a moon, people say, oh, well, that, that means something. Well, perhaps it does mean something. But it might not mean something in biblical prophecy. We can't, we have to be slow to um, sort of assign meanings to things and just assume that we know. Um, there'll be enough happening during the Great Tribulation where you're going to know it's the Great Tribulation. Uh, we have not reached that point yet. We are not in the Great Tribulation. Um, but we can certainly, who knows that our generation will enter into it. And so we need to be careful because he said, most of all, watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming in the evening at midnight at the crowning of the rooster, at the crowing of the rooster or in the morning, lest suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. Okay, so, you know, again, he's, he's, He's almost teaching again the parable of the vir of the ten virgins who fall asleep. He's saying, "My coming could find you um, preoccupied, not aware, not not reading uh, the signs carefully, not reading the biblical signs carefully." And he says, "What I say to you, what he's saying to his disciples here, I say to all." So this is a public teaching. Watch, keep watching, keep watching. Um, don't become alarmed prematurely, stay the course, um, stay awake, be careful of deception, and keep your heart straight. Uh, these are some basic things. Uh, Jesus uh, doesn't say that it's going to be easy for that last generation. Uh, they're going to have a lot to bear, but mostly they can keep their eyes on, on the Lord and on the written word. Um, and what the prophets, especially what the prophet Daniel um, has said. So uh, that's all we have um, for today. Uh, there's much more that we could have covered in those chapters, but I encourage you to start to ask the Lord uh, and start to pray, Lord, let me not be deceived. Let me, be, let me stay awake spiritually um, and let me uh, be a Berean. Let me look at teachings, so many end time teachings, and make sure that they are consistent with what Jesus says here and consistent with all of scripture. And that takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of study. And we can't, um, we can't just trust what we hear on the TV or what we may read in a book. It really does take a long, prayerful time. And we would err, you know, for those who say this doesn't matter, it'll all work out. Yes, it will. But it may be really difficult for you if you have not prepared your heart. Uh, we've seen in the last year, just with a, a, a pandemic, um, how draining it is and um, how our mindset can change and how we can be uh, tempted to look at the troubles rather than at the Lord. So let's be seeking the Lord. Let's be inquiring of him and let's be ready um, to, to believe for that you're going to be raptured out of a bad time is is frankly unscriptural and bad thinking and that may come as a shock to you but you need to look at the scriptures and better to be prepared better to be um, waiting upon the Lord with your oil lamps full than hoping that the bad situations will just kind of pass over you so um, I don't mean to be controversial but I mean to be heartfelt and to point you to the scriptures to truly study and see uh, what the Word of God says. Okay, God bless you and see you next time.